Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. I'm James coming at you from Birmingham because whatever. And today I'm here to talk to you about the Inhumans. Yes, it's the a long time coming we've been waiting for the Inhumans back way back when when it was first announced as a film now. Obviously to anyone's attention who pays attention to it, it's now been taken and made into a TV show. So here's the thing. I have a Cineworld World Unlimited card, so I don't pay for the cinema, I pay for it monthly and I can go whenever I want. However, they, sometimes, every now and again, something comes along in IMAX, which you can only see in IMAX, which, in this case, is the first two parts of The Inhumans, which I'm fine with. I paid the extra to go to the IMAX, and that was fine. But, uh, upon my realisation about going, I found out that I wasn't too pleased with The Inhumans. Yes, most of the reviews you've heard about the Inhumans, I would possibly quite accurately agree with. It has a lot of problems, and realistically, I left the cinema thinking, I paid four fifty for this. Like, four fifty, you know, like, I'm, I'm not a tight-fisted bastard, so, you know, like, when I leave the cinema thinking like that, I'm like, oh, what the fuck? But, yeah, the Inhumans is just a bit unimportant, it's uninteresting, and I'm going to break it down, hopefully we'll go on this journey together, and naturally I would encourage anybody to give it a go themselves, maybe you'll like it, maybe, you know, you, you, you'll kind of agree with me in some points, maybe, you you know, you, you might disagree with me on some points, which is absolutely fine. So let's crack on with it. So let's talk about the story. So the story begins on Earth, and there's a group of sort of inhuman hunters hunting two of the Inhumans, uh, and one guy whose name escapes me, Big Green Guy, I can say that right, Big Green Guy, and he tries to help this other young woman who has recently realised she's an Inhuman, and isn't too thrilled about it, let's level, she's not happy about it, and this, <laughs> right off the bat, you can tell that this is like, you know, horrible, horrible acting, right, so, you know, she talks to him, and he's like, oh, you're like, you're like us, you know, I can take you to a place where everybody's like you, um, and, which is a lie, you know, like, you know, like, I'll get to that, and she's like, oh, what, a freak, and I'm just like, oh, dear, dear doll, doll, no, no, stop it, stop it, stop acting. The thing is, with the Inhumans, is I find that I'm not, I'll say it off the bat, right, I'm not a big Inhumans fan, I don't really ha take a lot of interest with them, uh, I'm not greatly worried about what goes on in any of their comic book arcs and stuff like that, but I know that there are some people who are very precious of them and love them, and, you know, that's totally understandable, uh, because, again, from this series, I got points from certain characters that I did quite like. But yeah, I'll get into that. So, basically, the green guy goes missing, the young girl gets shot, and this is where the story kind of kicks off, uh, and then we are shown Atalan, we're treated to like a sort of pre-sex scene with Medusa and Black Bolt, you know, getting jiggy with it, Medusa's flaunting her dodgy hair, and you know, everything's just, you know, as, as, as cool as can be on Atalan. You get this impression that the Inhumans are totally just happy on the moon, everything's okay, and then we start to see cracks form very, very quickly. So we start to see Black Bolt and Medusa being contacted to come sort something out. And they go and they have a bit of a, a meeting, basically, about what's what's happening on Atalan, what it, what's the problems and stuff like this. And we're treated to, you know, just kind of getting little bits and bobs of these characters, you know, you're kind of getting... And... That's kind of interesting. I mean, I suppose in the first episode, yeah, you do have to kind of establish who these characters are, especially when people don't really know who they are. Like, they, you know, they're a bit of a... The Inhumans is kind of like a wild card to me, and it's just sort of like, right, okay, whatever. So, to tell you a bit about the characters, the most interesting character in this is Blackpool, which really shocked me because I thought that, you know, the the actor playing him was going to have some issues because he didn't want to wear the suit. Um, Anson Mount didn't want to wear Black Bolt's original suit. 
And I thought, right, okay, he's going to be one of those guys who doesn't want to do that. But I can understand why he doesn't, because it would cover his face mainly. And it's like, in the cinematic universe films, you know, you're never going to see Robert Downey Jr. in a mask for a whole film. You're never going to see Chris Evans in a mask for a whole film. Do you know what I mean? So that's kind of fine once you get over it. Um, he's kind of like an interesting character. Like, obviously, he can't speak because Black Bolt's power, you know, effectively <laughs> is the strongest power I think ever imaginable. He has the power of a king, you know, if he speaks he can shatter everything. You know, he can destroy a mountain, you know, and I would even go far if he was that angry he could probably split a planet in half. But yeah, so he can't speak. So he's this king who has to, you know, speak through sign language and Medusa speaks for him effectively. Which is a nice relationship because you can tell that these two people are genuinely in love with each other. There is a genuine connection there. And that that is felt. Um, and then we're treated to Serinda Swan playing Medusa. Now, Medusa's hair isn't as bad as it was in the first trailer, but it's still fucking horrible, right? There was a, there was an improved trailer released and people were saying, oh, it's much, much better, but, you know, for as long as that lasts, <laughs> not in, it, it's, it, it's still weird to look at. Which, as you do, just, just no. And then we have Ken Lung, who plays Karnak. Black Bolt's cousin and closest advisor, and he's the kind, he's a guy whose power, uh, he sees faults and things, you know, he sees the outcomes of a certain thing, which is why he's obviously Black Bolt's advisor, which, you know, causes a bit of a rift later in the, the first episode. We have, I'm gonna try and say this, Amy Equacor as Gorgon, who's also Black Bolt's cousin, but leader of the Atalan military, so he's the bit, he's the big you know, he's the big boss man. And he's an interesting character, you know, he's a guy who is very, very angry when, you know, a certain plot point comes out. Like, so basically when they find out that, you know, uh, big, big green guy whose name always escapes me, Triton, I believe it is. Yeah, I think it's Triton. When Triton goes missing, they, they, they all find out and it's Maximus that delivers the news. So it's like, they didn't know that Triton was being sent to Earth, like Gorgon didn't know that, and nor did Karnak. So they have a bit of a problem with the fact that, you know, they were like, well, Karnak's like, well, I'm your closest advisor, you should have asked me, and I could have probably prevented this. And Gorgon's like, you should have sent me, you should have done this, like, you knew I would have got it done. Which is a good rift in the dynamic, again, but you still don't really, you still don't really see enough of these characters, and this is something I'm going to weigh in heavily on, because you don't see enough of these characters to genuinely care about what's going on with them, because everything just kind of kicks off in the first episode, and leading into the second episode, and you, you just kind of sit there like, well, I don't know these characters, and I've seen things that I don't like about these people, the royal family are kind of dicks, like, <laughs> let's level, so, yeah, you one of the big things that's missing from the Inhumans is emotional gravitas, which I'll get to. And just to finish off with characters and stuff, yeah, we are treated to Isabel Cornish as Crystal, um, who's Medusa's sister, the youngest member of the royal family, and she has the ability to control the elements. Great power. <laughs> but we don't see enough of it in the first two episodes. We see bits. She's probably the most superhero-esque of them all. Uh, just because she has powers you would kind of associate with the X-Men. And then, once again, you know, the man himself, Iwan Rion, is Maximus. Now, I will say something. A lot of people say that Iwan Rion should have kind of saved the Inhumans. And I'll tell you, he kind of salvages it, even though his acting is not the best it's been. He does kind of try and salvage it, and he's working with what he has, to be quite honest. I mean, he's playing a villain who is effectively just another Loki, but less charming you know he's less fun he's less cool and collective and he misses a lot of that stuff he's just genuinely evil and wants to take over but we'll get into the story now and so you know basically triton gets offed on earth at least they think he's been offed and when they kind of find this out because that you know this happens like halfway through the episode because the half of the first episode is just kind of trying to establish who characters are what their roles are what they do effectively uh and believe me believe me when i tell you that when they say it was filmed on imax cameras they made a big fucking deal about making sure you knew it because yeah they just did. You know, slow motion shots everywhere, you know, specialist, you know, close-up shots of bullets and guns and stuff and just stuff I really don't give a fuck about, to be quite honest with you. So, when Maximus delivers the news that Triton has died, if I should say that before this, we see a scene of them sort of 
I can't remember the name, the name, the, the name, the name that they used. Uh, Teramorphosis or something like that. Uh, basically, what they do is they they met metamorphosize their people by putting them into a chamber and they put a crystal in it and the air by the time you come out of it will either give you will activate your inhuman powers or if you don't have them you won't get any powers effectively that's what the game is and we see what can only be a scene as maybe a brother and a sister who are going in and the sister comes out with like beautiful gorgeous blue butterfly wings which were actually quite nice to look at i must admit and the brother comes out seemingly with no powers so he's sort of not looked down upon the royal family are a bit disappointed because they don't like it when people don't get something but seemingly he's seen to not have anything which is quite sad to be quite honest but um Iwan Rion's character Maximus, he kind of levels with them because he, everyone just says, oh, you're just a human, you're just, you're nothing in comparison to us, which I'll get to as well, because to be quite honest, with the shit Maximus gets put through, you sit there and you're like, do you know what, son? Do you, do what you want to do, fucking off anybody you want, because no one should go through the kind of shit that Maximus goes through just because he doesn't have any powers. But that's something I want to touch on as well. There's a point, obviously I've not read The Inhumans, so if someone can please give me a bit of history, that would be great. But basically, if you don't get a power, The Inhumans land you in a mine. You get landed in a mine to mine for resources and minerals and stuff like that. And that's kind of, you, you know, the people of Atalan who do that don't live in nice houses, they live in a sort of ghetto area uh, of Atalan and that's kind of shit if you ask me, like, you know, it, it's very much like the royal family unintentionally or intentionally look down on people that don't have powers because they have powers and that is kind of like a point to be made there that I don't appreciate because, like I say, when all the shit kicks off and Maximus sort of lays siege to the royal family, you don't care. Because, like, this is the thing, Medusa makes a statement saying, Maxim we can't trust Maximus, he has the people's ear, he has, um, you know, he's, he's not to be trusted, he's this and he's that, and, you know, basically, he's conspiring against us, effectively. But that line, he has the people's ear, well, he only has the people's ear because the people, like, he says that he wants them to go to Earth, he wants them to live prosperous lives, he wants this, and yeah, he might be lying, but he's selling them something that they want. That, to me, is something very, very important, and that's one of Maximus's goals, like, he's always said, we should be going back to Earth, we shouldn't be living on the moon, we should be here, you know, we, sh we should be where we belong, and Black Bolt and Medusa basically say, oh, it'll be a war, it'll be a war, like, we, we don't want that, and Maximus is like, well, we deserve to live there, you know, he's, he's kind of conflicted on the basis that he feels that it's his right to effectively A, be the leader of Atalan because he doesn't feel that Black Bolt can realistically do it and that he doesn't want to live on the moon anymore. He doesn't want that. And neither do the people, really, because he's selling it to them that you deserve better, you deserve so much better and I'll give it to you. So when he's selling something like that, people, of course, people are going to buy into it. Of course, people are going to want it. So he's made it to be a sort of, like, in the first sort of episode, he kind of sells himself as an anti-hero and when... You know, he, you know, delivers the news that Triton has died. The royal family kind of think, oh dear, like, this isn't right. And there's a kind of rift where Gorgon says, you should have sent me, you know. And Karnak's like, well, I'm your closest advisor. You don't always have to talk to me about things, but you should have. And we could have probably prevented this. And Black Bolt sort of does kind of take that badly. So he basically decides that he's going to send Gorgon to Earth to look for Triton. Which he does. Gorgon ends up in Hawaii. Hawaii. Because New York's had too much shit done to it, that's just how it's going to be, end of story, no argument. That's fine. And yeah, when Gorgon, the leader of the Royal Guards, leaves, that's when Maximus decides, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to overthrow everybody. Medusa puts Black Bolt in his sort of chamber, it's like a chamber that he was put in when he was younger, I think it was to control his powers. Because obviously, when he speaks, you know, he causes serious damage. I mean, so much damage that he even killed his own parents doing it by accident. And Maximus, you know, holds that against him. So just, this is a thing, like, so much is happening in the first episode. 
and you're not really feeling that you're not really feeling attention. Things are just being said left, right, and centre, and you're just expected to pick up on them. You know, Maxim saying you killed our parents, or Medusa saying that oh, Maximus is this, Maximus is that, and that's the kind of problem because. If I feel that if Maximus lay siege on Atalan, maybe in the second or third episode, you would have had time to get to know who the Inhumans are. You would have learned a bit more about them, and that would have been quite interesting, if you ask me. Because you, the, like, like it says at the start, you, you know, you don't know enough about the characters, and you don't care about them enough when all this bad stuff happens to them. You, you know the. In fact, do you, do you know what I'll level you? Spoilers here, right? But, I mean, if you've seen anything for it, then it's not really spoilers. And if you're not going to watch it, you know, that's totally your decision. But the biggest bit of emotional levity in the first episode is... Nearly, well, I think it's the first episode because they were just shown back-to-back. It wasn't shown in any particular way. It's just shown back-to-back. Uh, there's no credits to separate the episodes. So, pretty sure it's the end of the first episode where Maximus takes um, Atalan for himself, and he basically f- tries to convince Medusa to be his friend again, because him and Medusa used to be best friends, and then she fell in love with Black Bolt, and then he got jealous, because, you know, he loved Medusa, and yeah, love triangles everywhere. It is basically shit Loki material, but with a sort of, such a predictable reason to do it. Like, that's kind of, like, the thing. And the main thing is, obviously, he's getting pissed off because, you know, he's getting pissed off because he's sick of being told that he's nothing in comparison to them. And, again, that's something that... That's a grave that the royal family dig for themselves because, you know, when they treat him like that, they do act as if they look down on anyone who doesn't have an inhuman power. And that makes you think, when Maximus does overthrow them, that you're like, well, you just got what you deserved, you know, that's what you get for being absolute wankers about the whole situation. And, yeah, so, the biggest bit of emotional gravitas in this is when Medusa refuses to side with Maximus, and Maximus gets really upset. So she's fighting off guards with her hair, again, bit strange, but, you know, okay. And... Basically what happens is Maximus says, I really wish you wouldn't make me do this. And then just out of nowhere, he just pulls out a pair of hair clippers and shaves her hair off. Just shaves it off. And, like, Medusa's crying and everybody's upset. Every- Maximus isn't too happy about it. Everyone's just emotionally disturbed by it. And I'm just sitting there laughing. Like, I'm just sitting there like, oh, my God, is this what you're trying to sell me? Are you trying to sell me this as emotional levity? Am I supposed to feel bad for her? This bitch, right, thinks she's above everybody else on Atalan because she's the fucking queen. Didn't he be having it, mate? So, that happens, and then Crystal appears with Lockjaw. Lockjaw is just the sweetest thing, but he looks fucking strange. But I love him. I don't even care. Lockjaw is, like, amazing. Give Lockjaw his own show, even though you can't speak. But Crystal appears with Lockjaw and tells Lockjaw to send Medusa to where uh, Gorgon and Karnak are. Uh, Just before this, Crystal sent Karnak to Earth, where... Gorgon was, Lockjaw took him, uh, then Lockjaw came back, uh, he takes Medusa to Earth, yeah, and basically most of the royal family have been evacuated, hands down, and then we see Maximus go to Black Bolt's chamber, and this is the part when Black Bolt kind of thinks, oh, I'm going to fucking kill you, and then Lockjaw appears and takes Black Bolt to Earth as well. Now, I should point out at this point, that's basically the first episode. The first episode is basically leading up to this siege that you really couldn't give a fuck about. Because, again, you don't care enough about the royal family to feel sorry for them. And in fact, at the end of the day, by the end of the second episode, I was sort of like going, right, okay, this is a bit sad for you guys, but you've brought it on yourselves, in my opinion. And that really, really, really bothers me it bothers me to such a high standard you have no idea because the way it ends which i'll get to later the way it ends makes you feel like you need to continue watching it just to see what's gonna happen and a lot of people have said not to but the second episode is kind of better than the first and i'll explain why later on in the show but yeah so Basically, Crystal doesn't get away. Crystal's still on Atalan. Maximus basically makes sure that Lockjaw gets put to sleep and can't save Crystal. So Crystal is then stuck there and Maximus is trying to whimsy her onto 
you know, his side, but she's just not for having it. And that's the end of that segment. Um, Maximus has the people on his side. Maximus has um, a goal that he wants to, you know, see through from what's seen. Uh, but another point in that episode that I missed was that the young boy um, who Maximus touches, uh, who didn't seemingly get powers, Maximus touches him and he kind of has a bit of a, yeah, he has a bit of a fit. And then Maximus kind of clicks that, oh, he he does have a power. And when he wakes up, he's like, oh, there was snakes around your neck. There was, um, you know, you were up against a wall. They were trying to kill you. And Maximus basically has a dispute with Medusa. And, you know, she basically strangles him with her hair. And that he kind of puts two and two together and thinks, oh, that's, that, that that's like, that that's me. Like, that, that that's her. And that's obviously why he decides that he's going to sh- cut all of her hair off. So she can't do that. So effectively, this chap is going to be a recurring character who Maximus relies on to kind of give him a wee glimpse into the future. Which could be a pretty good dyma- dynamic if Maximus uses that to stay ahead of the curve. So we'll have to kind of see what happens with that, should I choose to, you know, stay informed. But anyway, on to the second episode. The second episode actually is where the show kind of takes a bit of a... Mm, I, I, I don't really know. I mean, I, I would say the second episode's better than the first. But nothing happens, really. If anything, anything happens with Medusa. So I should point out that when Lockjaw took everyone to Earth, he failed to take them all to the same place. So the royal family are separated. Karnak is in a forest that he can't get out of. Uh, Gorgon's on a Hawaiian beach with... And he's just made pals who have be- some human friends who says to him, oh, yeah, like, you must be one of those Inhumans that we've heard about. And, you know, like, talking about that quite casually. And then he's like, I need to get back. I need to kill Maximus. I need to do this. And they're like, just tell him to come to you. Just give him your location. And they kind of, and Gorgon says, well, you better get out of here because if he comes, there's going to be some serious trouble. And they're like, oh, fuck it, it's your beach. We're not leaving. Like, so they're there for him, and that's quite interesting, but at the same time, again, nothing really interesting is happening by that point. We have Medusa, who's a, who's appeared in a crater uh, just outside Hawaii. Now, I should point out that this, I'm pretty certain this is all Hawaii, right? And it's it's different, it's fresh, it's something you didn't really, you didn't really do. And I like it, but it is what it is. And it's basically, the Inhumans are basically taking Hawaii like fucking the Avengers took New York. Anyway, I digress. So, they're all kind of scattered around Hawaii. They, we see Medusa contact Black Bolt every, like, once or twice, trying to figure out where he is and stuff. And she just asks, oh, just give me a sign that you're okay, and he puts his, like, communications device up to his heart, and she can hear his heart beating, it's kind of cute saying shit, but still don't give a fuck, and realistically, that's all I can, <laughs> that's all I can really say, the second episode, they are literally separated, Maximus sends one of his uh, trusted guards to go and basically try and bring, try and bring them back, because he wants to dish out some serious royal justice, and... Well, that's all well and good, uh, we see Medusa, like, on a bus, and she steals a guy's knife, and she ends up killing her off and stuff, so... Yeah, it's just, like, nothing seems to happen, this is it, like, I, I can't say, I can't express this enough. Things are happening, but they're happening so fast, and you really don't care. Understandably, the royal family need to get back, because they need to stop Maximus, because they need to save Earth, because Maximus will come to Earth, and he will you know, wage a war, and he'll get everyone on Atalan killed, probably, and he'll probably, you know, get all the humans killed, you know, you, you don't really know which way that would go. That's the difficult thing here, that's the thing that really kind of bothers me, it's not like there's been a build-up to the Inhumans, and maybe there was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I stopped watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., because when the Inhumans started coming in, it became the Inhumans show and not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I just became very isolated from the whole thing, and this is the part where I'm going to fucking rant, because I'm going to Marvel need to get their fucking finger out. This is the thing. I love Marvel. Love DC as well. But I'll admit when both of them are in the fucking wrong. Like, DC are wrong with what they're doing with most of their films. Fucking Marvel can't make a fucking good TV show to save themselves. Now, albeit, 
The Netflix series, yeah, they're good. The Defenders was lacklustre as fuck, in my opinion, but I still enjoyed it. It just wasn't what I expected. The Inhumans, I don't know who asked for it, I don't know who wanted to make a big deal about it, but the fact remains, it's still not that great. It's just like, like I say, so much happens, and you've not had time to get to know these characters, you've not had time to learn to like these characters, you've not had time to, you know figure out what these characters really are and what their intentions and their motives are. So, you know, the only character you really do get motives for are, is Maximus. And, you know, he's, as you say, he has the people's ear, it's what the people want, it's stuff like this. So he's basically trying to give people what they want, even though, you he, you know, he, he's mentioned at one point that he was actually, like, a bad kid and stuff like that, and he's actually a bad boy. And he's a bit, he's a wee bit nasty, he's a wee bit evil, and he's a wee bit bitter that he doesn't have powers. But that's the kind of thing that, you know, later down the line, you know, he's going to be, like, a dictator as leader and stuff like that. But again, right now it's irrelevant. You know, he's just turned to Atalan against the royal family. He's got Crystal held captive. Lockjaw's asleep. And, you know, the rest of the royal family are scattered around Hawaii. So I'm like, okay, what the fuck? Why, one, like... This it just doesn't seem real enough. Like the Inhumans should have been like a sci-fi Game of Thrones, in my opinion. It should have been something along the lines of that. It should have been very political. It should have been, you know, it should have been like this is how this works. And arguably, it it completely doesn't do that. It completely misses the bat. It's just Marvel trying to throw out another action thing. And, yeah, okay, that's what people want, but at the same time, people want story, people want a cohesive story, and there's not a cohesive story, there's not a cohesive anything. The set designs aren't that great. Like, obviously, the royal family live on the moon, right? I won't deny that, but their palace looks like a fucking warehouse of epic proportions. Like, nothing looks interesting enough. In fact, Karnak's strategy room looks quite cool. It looks interesting and nice, and we see a bit of his powers as well, like him trying to suss out how a situation's going to work and analysing it and going, okay, that doesn't work, so I'm going to do this. That's interesting. That's cool. We see Gorgon with just brute force, like smashing his hoofs into the ground and stuff like that. Again, that's fine. But again, you know, we're teased with Black Bolt and what he can do. The police tase him. The police tase him and he lets out a little gasp and he flips one of their cars and... The police are just like, oh, you know, another fucking superhero, blah, 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 blah. Now, I will admit, Black Bolt, when he goes to Earth, doesn't understand the concept of money, and it's really, really funny. I, I enjoy it. It's just flat, but I enjoy it because it kind of took me out of it for a bit. He goes into, like, a suit shop, a tailor shop, and he tries to get, and he gets a suit, but he doesn't think he has to pay for it, so he just walks out, and that's what causes the police to go after him. It's him not knowing what human customs are or maybe he just thinks because he's a king he can do whatever the fuck he likes which you know that's okay too i suppose so he gets the police on him and then by the end of the second episode he gets captured and he gets put in jail and he totally accepts it and that's where it ends it ends with the inhumans completely disbanded it ends with the royal family separated maximus is taken over at one of um uh, one of uh, maximus's loyalists gets killed by Medusa. Medusa swears that she's gonna get Black Bolt and they're gonna go back and they're gonna take their they're gonna take their, their place back and it's it's just I'll, I'll be honest, like I felt bad paying four pound. I I paid four pound fifty. I felt so bad for it and I I've never felt like that, you know, like I felt I had to see it because, you know, I wanted to give it its day in court. But given it its day in court made me not like it at all. Like, like I say, just, it's not interesting, and I keep saying that, it's just not, it's, 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 it's it, it gets boring at times, in fact, it gets boring most of the time, you know, I didn't personally give a shit about the Inhumans, to be quite honest, I thought that the royal family were fucking dicks, and they deserved everything that they got, and I'm actually rooting for Maximus, to be quite honest, like, I just want Maximus to fucking decimate everybody and let that be that, but, as you know, that can't happen, and Maximus is the villain, and Maximus needs to be put in his place. So I don't really know where the Inhumans is going to go from here. Character-wise, the characters are there. They're not written very well. They're not always acted incredibly well. They, the story is just, it's just flat. It's nothing new. It's nothing special. It's, 
I expected better, to be quite honest. I expected better from something I really didn't care about. And that's quite sad, to be quite honest. I wanted, like I say, I wanted it to be like a sci-fi Game of Thrones. I wanted it to be something really special. I wanted it to be about fucking maybe humans coming to the moon and trying to, you know, figure things out and the, the Inhumans didn't want that and stuff like that. Could have been, there was so much room for it to be spectacular, but it's not. And that's really a letdown. And I don't know how it's going to go in terms of like, oh, will they go back to Atalan or will they just come to Earth? Like, so... And, as you, and, and you can probably hear it in my voice. I'm struggling to talk about it. I, like, I'm, I'm at half an hour right now on the podcast, like 33 minutes, and I'm struggling for things to say. Like, I, I, I just don't know what... I don't know what you want. Like, it's... Uh, Watch it and see what you think. You'll only know if you enjoy it from what you watch and what you take from it. But for me, personally, as a huge Marvel fan who yet didn't care about the Inhumans, but wanted to enough to go see it even though all the reviews were terrible for it, this is me sitting there saying it really, really does just make me lose whatever interest I had in the Inhumans, and I hope it picks up, I really hope that it does, because I felt that there was a slight improvement in the second episode, even though, again, nothing happened. So, we don't know where it's going to go, I don't know personally where it's going to go, it's it's a tie into the MCU, but it's, it's going to be like how the Runaways is, it's not you're not going to hear them talk about Captain America or anything like that. You're not going to get that. But it exists in the same universe. And who knows what's going to happen. Maybe it will turn out to be really, really good. I doubt it, but maybe it will. And yeah, like I say, I think that there was just so much on it to just be good. And Scott Buck is the showrunner on it. He, If you're not familiar with his work, he was the showrunner on Iron Fist. And that really says it all, to be quite honest with you. Like, Netflix can sit and tell me for as long as they want that Iron Fist was the most binge drama. But Iron Fist was a piss-poor show. It was terrible. I watched it start to finish. But, you know, like, even, even I was sitting there like, this isn't good, this isn't good, this is bad, this is bad. And this guy who's done The Inhumans now is, you know, it's, it's following the same problem. So my problem is... Is this guy to blame, or is it just that Marvel are trying to put out too many IPs? They're saturating this market. There's too many superhero shows. I mean, I can name like loads off the bat for you. There was Agents of Shield, which is now finishing. There's a uh, Cloak and Dagger in the works. There's uh, the New Warriors in the works. Uh, there is Iron Fist. There's Daredevil. Two seasons of Daredevil. Jessica Jones, Luke Cage. Um, on the DC side, not forgot it, there's Arrow, there's The Flash, there's Supergirl, there's, um, there was Constantine, which was by far the best comic book TV show on Earth. You know, bring it back, please. And, you know, like, with all these shows and all these films, there is an oversaturation issue. And people don't know what to watch. People are just seeing the same thing over and over again. And then humans should have been different. It should have been different. It should have stood out. But it can't because they don't have the writing, the acting is subpar, the story and the plot is just happening way too fast for you to give a shit, and to be quite honest, the more you learn about the royal family and those two episodes that I watched, the less I cared about them, because they were assholes. They, they are, they are actual assholes, in my opinion. The only character I really liked was Black Bolt, because he's a fucking idiot. He is literally a fucking idiot. Like, yeah, okay, he doesn't understand things, but he's a fucking tool. Like, let's level, right, he is. And, but by far, you know, I, I let him away with it because he is totally the best character in it. You know, some people like Karnak because he's just a rude cunt. And this is another thing, I don't like that about Karnak. He's got this ability to see every outcome and to see every strategy and stuff like that. And I, I like that, I think that's good. Of course he's going to be a bit of an ass. Like, of course he's going to be a bit of an asshole about it. But he's just so fucking rude, and I swear to God, if he spoke to me the way he spoke to somebody in that show, I would fucking belt him one, like, you know, and you know what, I can predict it coming, but I'll just kick him swiftly in the balls, I cannot stress enough that 
just having a character who is an asshole for the sake of being an asshole is not an easy way to be funny. It's an easy way to think you're going to be funny, but it's not. And I fucking don't like that because I'm an asshole and I feel misrepresented, right? That's just how I feel. So, you know, Marvel, get a fucking grip, right? You know, have the class and have the elegance, right? You know, he's, he's not like he's fucking Tony Stark who's just smart and an asshole for the sake because he's smart and rich. Do you know what I mean? Like, Karnak is just like, mm, I can see everything and I'll just, you know, be rude to everyone because, you know, blah, 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 blah. It, to me, that's not an easy way to be funny. Some people will like that and some people will like him. When he's in a bit of danger in the second episode, when he feels genuinely concerned, that's, that, that's cool because you see that, that layer being took off and you see that he is quite frightened and he doesn't understand Earth, he doesn't understand anything and he's worried and I like that, it gave him so much more depth. In the second episode we do see a bit more depth, Medusa's terribly upset because for the sole reason that she's away from her family, she can't protect her family and Black Bolt doesn't really know what's going on because he doesn't speak, you don't get a lot of emotion from him, you just see it in his face and he's just walking about with this big stellar fucking dread frown, judge dread frown on his face, like, mm, I, mean, I can't speak, but I wish I fucking could. Do you know what I mean? Like that, So that's the kind of thing. But overall, what can I say about it? It's, um, it's quite something. It takes something... I, I would say it's better than Iron Fist. I prefer it to Iron Fist. But that's because it's trying to be different. And, like I say, it, it, to me it should have been like a, a sci-fi Game of Thrones. That's what it should have been. And I'm completely disappointed that that's not anywhere near what it is. It just feels like, you know, nothing special happens. And with that wonderful cover of Paint It Black when Maximus is storming the Royal Palace to take it over, that's probably the best bit. It's just it's just a nice piece that kind of breaks it up and... You know, you just kind of get what's going on, even though things are just happening. Everything is disjointed. Everything's just disjointed, messy, ugly. The CGI, yeah, okay, it's better. It's better now that it's finished, but it's still not great. And I just wish that they maybe took a little bit more time to think about what story they wanted to tell. I mean, they they know what story they want to tell. They want to tell the story of Maximus and why he does what he does and why he's done what he does, but. It's not... It feels unearned. A lot of the Inhumans just feels unearned. You don't really... You don't really appreciate what's going on because you're supposed to just take a lot of history that's apparently happened before this and you've just been flung into the action like, oh, right, okay. So Maximus has now decided he's had a fucking enough. And it would have been cool because there is a bit in the first episode when Maximus, you know, gets the piss taken out of him um, when he takes the boy back to his... He's, he's people, um, when he says, oh, I don't think I got a power or anything like that, and he says, oh, well, to the mines with you then, and um, Maximus says, no, he's just, Maximus tries to defend them, and he says, oh, what do you know, you're just a human, and he's like, yeah, and he delivers this speech, this speech of, like, we deserve better, we don't, we shouldn't be living here on the moon, we should, we should be doing this, and we should be doing that, and we should be on earth, and we should be happy, you could be happy, sky's the fucking limit, boys and girls, And he gets them on side, so they try to bully him, but he gets them on side. And that is an interesting characteristic with Maximus. Maybe if there is any goodness in him, it's to just make sure that that he gets the means to his end. But part of me does think that he just wants to go to Earth because he feels that it is entitled. And fair play on him, to be quite honest, because the royal family just want to live on the moon because they're scared that the Inhumans will get killed off. Which yeah okay it's it, it, it was a, it was a it was a plot point in Agents of Shield it's a plot point in the, the start of this, but again you know you do kind of get this segment when Maximus delivers the news about Triton, and they send Gorgon, Maximus is on the phone to the people that shot Triton, and it's like a plot twist you've seen coming a long time ago, you would have because Maximus is just evil but yeah you just. <sighs> It, you, everything you can kind of just see coming. You, you sit down, you're like, oh, okay. I don't know anything about the Inhumans, but I know Maximus betrays them. Maximus is going to betray them. They're all going to get sent to Earth and fucking, you know, you know, they're all probably going to end up separated and stuff like that. Yeah, that happened. Oh, but one of the royal family won't get taken away. Oh, yeah, that happened. And you, you can just kind of picture in your mind where it's going to go. And when it tries to be funny, I think it fails... It tries to just force funny by being gimmicky and just 
being obvious and that again it just it fails it it fails so so much and like I say maybe maybe the season shouldn't have happened until at least half the season was done you know we should have seen interference from earth we should have seen like humans saying there's something on the moon there's something on the moon and then that instigates Maximus to go right fuck it we need to take action you know I mean pacing pacing is important pacing is the most important thing in the world don't just throw everything at people and expect people to enjoy it. And while I say, like, some of the landscapes and stuff like that that they use in Hawaii are gorgeous and stuff, but again, it's just like, you know, it doesn't save it. And the costumes, oh my god, the costumes. Don't get me wrong, I'd wear Black Bolt's outfit, right? That's a fucking good outfit. But they all kind of wear similar clothes, they all look weird, and when they go to Earth, everybody's just looking at them like, it's it's the it's the Avengers thing. It was Thor, it was the first Thor film, like, when the Warriors 3 came to help Thor on Earth, and everybody was like, oh, is there a cosplay convention in town? <laughs> it's been done before. Do something different. That's where I'm going to leave it. They need to do something different with it. I don't think the Inhumans is going to pick up. I'll keep my ear to the ground with it, and I'll probably do a follow-up review when the whole series is done. But right now, I'm not feeling it at all. I'm not sitting here thinking everything's going to just work out and everything's going to be cool. I don't see that at all. And really, I hope it does. You know, I, I don't like seeing creative work going to waste. I don't like seeing all the time and effort and the work that people do lead amounting to nothing, amounting to something that's not well-received and stuff like that. So, I wish it the best of luck. Watch it and tell me what you think, and you know, never know. Maybe you'll enjoy it. You know, you you may. I didn't, but I did feel that there was a gradual increase in quality with the second episode, ever so minuscule. So it's going to need to do something really fucking good to bring it back. On that note, I'll leave you on that. What would I, th- what would I rate the first two episodes yeah, out of ten? Because Mario will kill me if I don't rate them out of ten. Um. I'll give, to be quite honest, I'll give it. Th- I'll give the two episodes overall in the IMAX a three. Not based on quality, because I like to give it like, you know, I like to rate it on how fun it is and how technically minded it is. Technically, disregarding the CGI, technically, it's okay. Okay, I'll give it a three for being technical, but it's not anything I've not seen before. It's typical Marvel TV stuff. You know, and at the start, of the, there's a lot, there's weird slow motion segments and stuff like that that they've just put in, I think, to be cool. And then there is how fun it is. Do I think it's fun? Not really. I don't, I, I, I wouldn't even, I, I don't find it fun. I find it that it's cheap and it tries to be funny by using, by appealing to the denominators that are like, oh, let's have an asshole character that just says asshole things and that'll be funny, you know? Because Karnak is effectively supposed to be the comic relief. And he isn't comic relief by the second episode. Do you know what I mean? Like, he kind of... There are things that you you should laugh at that he does. But you don't. In fact, if anything, I found myself laughing when Medusa got her hair shaved off. True story. When Medusa got her hair shaved off, it's built up. The music's so emotional. Like, Medusa's crying, there's just tears everywhere, and I just could not give any less of a fuck about her hair getting cut off. If anything, I thought that was proper drama. Like, but I was sitting there, like, laughing at it, and I felt like such a bad person, but I was like, fuck it, she's no real deal with it. But yes, on that note, this is me signing off from Birmingham, again, because whatever. Uh, If you enjoyed this, let me know what you thought, let me know what you think of the Inhumans if you watch it, and, like I say, give it a go, and... Whether you like it or not is completely up to you. I didn't personally enjoy it. I'm giving it a 3 out of 10 purely out of how technically minded it was, not because it was fun. And yeah, um, that's all I can really say about it. And a lot of this was me repeating myself, but uh, it's me genuinely struggling to kind of continue talking about it. It just... It, it's it's a fucking... It's fucking bad, like... I'm actually broken a bit, like, because I really just wanted it to be decent, you know. With Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. finishing, which I didn't really watch anyway, I kind of expected something a bit different, something a bit better, but, nah, 
it's it's kind of it's fallen on its ass, and I think Marvel need to pick up on their TV shows. Even Defenders needed a put up the ass. Do you know what I mean? So maybe it's an oversaturation thing, or maybe it's just because the shows are genuinely not as great quality as they should be, and that is the price you pay when you try to put out so much. So no one's asking Marvel to put out all this shit. No one's asking DC to put out all this shit. People want something to kind of tide them over, to take them out of like the real world for a bit so that they can enjoy it. And when you just throw mediocre shit that no one cares about into the mix, what can you do? But on that note, I'll leave you on that one. I've been James from Glaswegian Geeks. Uh, do please remember to rate, review and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this review. Apologies for my ums and my ahs and stuff like that. And yeah, also remember that you can buy nice clothes from Ripped Apparel using our code at the checkout, Glaswegian Geeks, all caps, no spaces. And save yourself 10%, you'll be helping us out as well. And you can find some nice good t-shirts and stuff. And if you're looking for any reviews and stuff like that, and you know, the most recent uploads and stuff, you can head along to our websites, which is www.glaswegiangeeks.wordpress.co.uk. Dot com. Definitely dot com. Yeah. I'm an idiot. But on that note, guys, geek out.